Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to the 1st of February. This is your boarding call for Broomstick Airways. We are about to take off from Ireland to our next destination. I hope you all had a lot of fun in Ireland from all the pictures posted and the stories I've read or watched videos of. It seems like you did. I highly recommend you go and watch um, Laura from Mad Mimi's Farming and Crochet and her visit to Ireland. It's a great video and I'll leave a link in the description below. My projects, Trev the Travelling Snake, well he grew quite a bit because I decided I would do the flax for a Belfast with lots of green in between. I did cream and black for um, Guinness while well, Thing had a pint of Guinness and then I did um, this what hopefully close to fuchsia pink that I could find in my stash. So recent fuchsia pink in County Cork during spring there's just beautiful flowers everywhere but the fuchsias are prolific especially these real pinky corally looking ones. I love fuchsias so that's what I did for County Cork. So flax for Belfast, Guinness for Dublin, Thing was having a drink while I was looking around and of course we enjoyed the flowers in County Cork. I will probably put some more green. Seems to be a lot of green in this snake but Ireland is very lush and green. So are we all ready to fly to our next destination? Where are we going? North? Where it's colder? East? West? South? Where do you think we're going? Well, are you ready to dance the flamenco? Because we are off to Spain. Spain is one of Thing's favourite places to visit. He's probably been on three trips there without me. And we both love Barcelona. So we are visiting Barcelona, Spain. Generally he goes over there because he's retired. And he either meets up with me in London when, we, when I get time off from work to visit our son. But I actually did one year meet up with him in Barcelona and had a week there. And oh, it is an amazing place. You really must stop and visit Barcelona, Spain. So let's get on to my research. Barcelona is a city on the coast of the northeastern Spain. It is the capital and largest city of the autonomous community of Catalonia, as well as the second most popular municipality of Spain, with a population of 1.6 million within its city limits. There are so many people. It's unbelievable. Barcelona has a rich cultural heritage and today is an important cultural centre and a major tourist destination. Tourists from all over the world are there before COVID. Climate. Barcelona has a hot summer Mediterranean climate with mild winters and warm to hot summers, while the rainiest seasons are autumn and spring. So... Some national symbols. First of all, the flag. The flag of Barcelona is red, white and yellow. Now, some of the Spanish flags have a bit of blue in them. Let's check them out. Decide on which flag you like. National symbols. The flower. The national flower of Spain and Barcelona is the red carnation. I love carnations. The animal is the bull. The national animal. Mind you, bullfighting is very limited now and well supervised. It, you're very lucky if you really want to see a bullfight getting in to see one. There are not that many. It's frowned upon. The national bird is the short-toed eagle. Now if I can find a picture of one, I'll put it at the end so you can check out the short-toed eagle. The national dish, of course, is paella. Now, I'm not a big rice fan. I, um, I, I don't mind paella, but I can live without it. Um, I, they do serve a lot of seafood. Thing likes all going to places where they serve chili mussels or mussels in white wine. or He loves seafood. But if I can find the photo, which I might not be able to in a hurry, 
I ate something and took a photo of on the plate. On the plate, it'll look disgusting. When you see it, you'll know what I mean, if I can find it. But believe me, it tasted amazing. And because the place I bought it from, they couldn't speak English. They couldn't explain to me what it was. And I've never really shown anybody the photo because it doesn't look great. But yes, the most delicious thing I had. It is a combination of sausage, mince and things. But um, yeah, not very appealing on the plate. But the food in Spain is just amazing. We went to taste that... Um, Amaragot hat, I can't remember how to pronounce it. The ha the pigs are raised on acorns and that's all they eat. And the ham is very expensive. And there is a place where you can go and taste all these different hams. Like the pigs have been raised for 19 years on this ham or nine years or two years or 25 years where the meat is being cured and the pigs were raised on these acorns. It's an the ham is like nothing you've ever tasted. You have it with cheese and bread and wine and you just go in and like one serve for Adel or two serves. Yeah, it was, a, and you overlook the, the shopping district of Barcelona and it's such a fun evening before you go out shopping. So yes, try some of the hams while you're in Barcelona. The climate during February. Well, Barcelona's hot summer and mild winters sort of dictate what the weather will be like in February. Now I'm, sorry, hiccups. I'm doing the average mean, which I'm, means I'm doing the average high and the average low. So the average high is 12.4 Celsius or 54.3 Fahrenheit during February. The low is 9 Celsius or 48.7 Fahrenheit. See, there's not a big swing between the high and the low. Hopefully I won't have a blue and purple snake for the entire trip. There is so much to see and do. Barcelona is internationally renowned as a tourist destination with numerous recreational areas. One of the best beaches in the world monuments, historical monuments, including eight UNESCO World Heritage Sites. One of the places you must visit is the Magic Fountain. It was constructed in 1929 for Barcelona's International Exposition. The fountain sprays 700 gallons of water a second through 3,620 jets to create its effect. The highest water spout reaches 170 feet. It is best seen at night when it is all lit up. Believe me, it is really amazing. The only thing that I think is slightly better is Bellagio's fountains in Las Vegas. Parks. Barcelona contains 60 municipal parks, 12 of which are historic, 5 of which are botanical, 45 of which are urban, and six of which are forests. Why so many urban parks? Well, one thing or I stay in the city of Barcelona, we tend to stay in the financial district. It's not as touristy, it's not as busy, it's more reasonable. The food is more traditional and amazing and the people are friendly. But the thing about that is most people who live around there are in really high rise apartments. And you see at five o'clock, on average, when mum and dad get home from work or dad gets up, the whole family pours out into the local park. The kids play, there are tennis tables, water fountains, the people all meet and chat and they usually stay there till about six and then hide home for dinner. It's their outing into the fresh air. That's why there's so many urban parks in Barcelona. Make sure you visit a park. And this is a park you should visit. Now, I'm not sure I'll pronounce it correctly, but you can always check it out. Park Guel. It's a privatized park system composed of gardens and architectural elements located on Carmel Hill in Barcelona. The park was built in the 19th from 
1900 to 1914 and was officially opened as a public park in 1926. Its UNESCO declared this park a World Heritage Site under works of Antonio and, and yeah, Antoni Gaudi, the most famous Catalan architect. We visited it. We had a great day there. It was quite a hike getting to it. You need to be a little bit fit, um, especially if you want to save money and do a bit of it on foot. Um, yes, it is beautiful and worth a visit. So I'll list these in the description below because I'm not sure I'm getting the pronunciation right. So my most favourite place to visit and is a must-see is the Sagrada Familia. The basilica that is still being built. It is the largest unfinished Catholic church in the world, designed by Catalan architect Antonio Gaudi, who lived from 1852 to 1926. His work on the Sagrada Familia is part of a UNESCO heritage site. On November the 7th, 2010, Pope Benedict consecrated the church and proclaimed it a minor basilica. This thing is huge. Gaudi um, took over as chief architect, transforming the project with his architectural and engineering style combining Gothic and Art Nouveau forms. Gaudi devoted the remainder of his life to this project from um, 19th of March, 1882, 83, sorry and he is buried in the church's crypt. At the time of his death in 1926, less than a quarter of the project was completed. It relies totally on public donations. Progress, progression is slow. It was interrupted by the Spanish Civil War. There was a fire in 1939, and some of the original plans and um, Materials were destroyed, but Franco de Paula Quintana took over management of the site and he was able to go on due to the material which, which he found saved from Gaudi's workshop and it was reconstructed from published pan, plans and photographs. Construction resumed to intermittently progressing through the 1950s. Describing the Sagrada familiar art critic Raina Sebes said it's probably impossible to find a church building anything like it in the entire history of art. Look this thing is magnificent even if you're not into architecture you will be blown away with the outside of it they're still working on it they believe if it continues the way it is prior to COVID they were hoping it would be finished by 2026, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. We spent an entire day there. You need to allocate a day. The queues to get in to see it are long. You need to book. Um, don't be disappointed if they turn you away at the gate because there are just too many people. You have to pick your time of year to visit it. But truly, once you see the outside and then see the inside, this church will blow you away. I have been to the Vatican City. I have looked at the Sistine Chapel, but nothing compares to this church. Definitely worth a visit. I have a souvenir plate and I have a couple of fans from Spain because whenever thing goes to Spain, he buys me a Spanish fan because I used to use them down at the markets when it's hot and I still take one with me. Um, the other thing he tried to do once is drops yarn is quite popular in Barcelona. But the thing with it is he found a craft shop and he looked at the times open and when he made the effort to go there, they'd be closed. And he said he did that five days running at different times and they were always closed. So he never got me any drops yarn, which I've never tried, but he is planning to go again this year and 
Yes, he said. I will try and get you some of that drops yarn. You just tell me what sort of things you like and hopefully my Spanish is good enough to let the lady in the shop know if she ever opens the shop. So make sure you can find a yarn shop in Barcelona that is open. Guys, there are lots of museums to visit. The Picasso Museum was on my bucket list, but it was very disappointing. It's not um, great. It's okay. I guess to our venture to the adventure to the Picasso Museum was spoiled because of all the years and all the times Thing has been to Spain on his own. It was the day his wallet was pickpocketed. Pickpockets are rife in Barcelona. So hang on to your broomsticks and take care of your valuables. The thing about it, everybody is really helpful. Um, it happened at the train station. The train people directed us to a place when you were to go and lodge that he'd lost his wallet. They got footage from the CTV of the train area and forwarded it there so that because they are trying to stop these pickpockets and it was two young women and when we went to this place no joke it is a massive room and there are about 30 to 40 people who had been pickpocketed that morning there was an Asian girl who had everything from a handbag taken without even realizing it and she was she was from America she was originally from Japan but was now living in America and visit Barcelona and she said it was an old couple who stood to talk to her and she never even noticed the old lady had undone her bag and taken her wallet her passport everything they work in pairs one distracts you and the other pickpockets you what happened to us was it was very busy, we're about to get on the train and silly thing put his wallet in his pocket on the side of his cargo pants. He thought because it was buttoned down, she wouldn't, they wouldn't get in there. And the guy that was stood opposite as we stepped on said, she's got your wallet. And yeah, he said he felt nothing. He didn't even feel her brush his leg and undo the buttons. They are very good at pickpocketing in Barcelona. The only other place where I've seen that they're just so talented at it is Milan in Italy. So look after your broomstick because they'll want them and they'll take anything that isn't nailed down. Guys, there is lots to do in Barcelona and check out. So get onto your virtual devices and have a look. Certainly check out the Sagrada Familia, lots of parks, just so many beautiful museums. I think, um, as Thing said to me, of all the museums he's visited, the Picasso is the most disappointing. The Salvador Dali Museum is probably the best on his list at the moment. And one of my bosses today, because I said I'm thinking of stopping off in Amsterdam, said there is the most magnificent Van Gogh Museum there. So yeah, whatever you're into, check it out lots of food lots of great food and great wine and the people are really friendly and the further you get out of the city and explore even though the english is limited you have a great laugh i know these people when they saw my face when they brought out this thing on a plate they were all nudging at each other and laughing because they knew what i was thinking but they encouraged me to try it and it was beautiful Guys, I'm sorry this is late getting up. Yesterday at work was my big event, uh, annual tertiary education scholarships. It didn't run smoothly without hiccups, which is normal, but it was very, very successful. For a small charity, we gave away $90,000 to young people who are trying to further their education at university or tertiary education outlets or um, music academies and it is so rewarding to see how much this money means to them and their families during this economic crisis we're all going through so yes it finished late there were hiccups and i'm extremely tired i know michelle from michelle's Macri in new zealand i'll put a link to her channel check her out she was wondering when if we're going to get off the ground because there's been so much rain 
of flooding in Australia and so much rain and flooding in New Zealand. But me, I stayed in Ireland. I didn't duck home for a trip. So if Michelle's taking off today, make sure you've got a snorkel on because I think New Zealand's really copying it at the moment. Please check her channel out. She is um, exploring small amigurumis and improving our amigurumi skills and shopping her stash for projects. And she is part of a yarn vacation. Now don't forget, at the end of this video, there is a participant prize draw for January. It's a $25 gift voucher, or if you email me, we can come to some other arrangement if you don't want a gift voucher, because it is open worldwide and it is the easiest thing to do. I think last check, and before I do it at the end of this video, I will check, we're up to almost 30 participants, and that is awesome. It's, it makes it worthwhile putting in the time and effort to do the yarn adventures on our yarn vacation AU. It is so much fun watching everybody's feedback. So explore Barcelona and I am looking forward to see your pictures and hearing your stories. Until next time, bye for now. Welcome to our January participant prize draw, hashtag yarn vacation AU. There are 29 names on the wheel, so thank you everyone for participating. I hope you continue to enjoy our make along. We're about to give away a $25 gift voucher to one lucky participant. Good luck everyone. Ruth Draco, I think Draco, I think that's how you pronounce it. Congratulations, Ruth. Um, if you could email me and let me know um, what sort of gift voucher you like. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it'll probably be a $25 Amazon voucher or we can make some other arrangements. Well done and thank you for participating. And make sure, guys, you post your pictures with hashtag yarnvacation for February. Bye for now.